a $175,000 coin. Yeah, you heard right, $175,000 coin. Hello, Silver fans, this is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, entertainment. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoy ancient coins or coin collecting of any kind, be sure to subscribe. I make videos with the foremost experts in the field of numismatics. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys. Hey, I am uh, with uh, Aaron Burke uh, at Harlan J. Burke on the 13th floor. And uh, this is kind of a surreal moment. Uh, Aaron uh, just handed me a coin that I have here in my left hand uh, that is a $175,000 coin. Yeah, you heard right, $175,000 coin. And uh, I mean, my house 17 years ago when I purchased it was just a little bit more than that. But here in my hand, I'm holding a coin of that value. Aaron, I'm getting a little nervous just holding this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set it down right here. And uh, perhaps you could tell my audience the story of this coin and how it came about. Absolutely. So this coin was issued by Titus between 80 and 81 AD, and that is the Colosseum on the on the obverse of the coin. There's only two issues that actually have the Colosseum, uh, one in the Severan dynasty, I think under Caracalla, and then this original one under Titus, which is the most famous. It's actually in my dad's book on the 100 greatest ancient coins, mm -hmm. and you can see it's number 11 out of the 100 greatest ancient coins. Um, so this is now also considered a Jewish themed coin because um, when uh, Titus quelled the, uh, the Jewish rebellion against the Romans because the Jews didn't want to pay their tax to Rome like everyone else who was contrary <laughs> had to do yeah. because they were paying their tax to the great temple. And so what happened is when they defeated the Jews, the Romans, they took all the money that had been put into the great temple for hundreds and hundreds of years and, um, and then stole the money and brought it back to Rome and they built the Colosseum. And so the, the Colosseum was built on the back of the Jews' uh, wealth that they had been putting there for centuries. And uh, we know this because in the upper pediment of on one of the higher graded uh, coins somewhere in here, there was actually a statue that showed uh, the Jews being defeated. So it's pretty well documented that Titus had taken all the money out of the temple and had brought the money back to Rome and then built the, this great Colosseum. Uh, and so um, today the Colosseum doesn't look like this, but this is one of the only versions that we know of to show what it looked like in its heyday. So it was pretty amazing coin, and this is one of the most sought after of all ancient coins in the whole series of ancient classical numismatics. Fantastic. I, you know, it's an honor for uh, you to show that to me. I, I feel very honored. Uh, you must have seen some amazing stuff that, um, that one Eidmar. Yeah, I've actually um, owned several Eidmars, and actually I was the underbidder on the gold Eidmar that brought four and a half, four point two million, wow. which is the most expensive ancient coin ever to sell. And uh -huh. then I bought the one with a hole in it uh, this past spring at NAC uh, oh, yeah. in Switzerland for. 2.2 million. Incredible. So I think all in it was about 2.6 million. Mm -hmm. um, and there's only three gold ones in existence. And the one we had was actually, the hold one that we bought was actually at the British Museum for 12 years. Incredible. So it's an amazing coin. Well, uh, and I'll tell you what, an amazing coin, amazing place uh, to be Thank here. You. And uh, uh, I really appreciate the time. Anytime. Okay, guys. Hey, I am back in the coin cave. And uh, hey, I'm about to show you what I picked up at Harlan J. Burke. I'll tell you what, what a fascinating conversation, great opportunity, and man, holding that expensive coin was something else. But uh, that $175,000 coin was just a little bit out of my budget, but I did pick up about, gosh, probably about eight or 10 coins that I'm about to show you on the old uh, Tom Love uh, coin microscope. And before you 
Oh, look at these. I can't wait to show you these. I want you to take a look. You can kind of give me your opinion on them. But before I show you these, let me just let you know. You know, I kind of like ancient coins to uh, like when I was a little kid watching a football game with my dad. And oh, back in the day, I would be watching the Chicago Bears with my dad. And from time to time, they'd play the Dallas Cowboys. And those cheerleaders would come on the screen. I have to admit, I didn't exactly know what I was looking at. All I knew was that I liked it. And that is kind of the same thing here. Uh, I really don't know much about ancient coins at all, but hey, enough about that. Let me just show you these coins one at a time. Uh, I'll just pick them randomly. Take a look at this one here. And uh, let's see, there is the obverse. I'm not exactly sure. And by the way, let's make this an interactive video here. If you know about ancient coins and you know whose image that is on the obverse here, let me know. I think I picked this one out of the pile for the reverse. It's got, uh, let's see, L, A, you got the alpha on the right there. But take a look at that. It appears to be a bird of prey, perhaps an eagle. And it's probably why I picked this one. And, uh, you know, they had a big pile of ancient coins, and I just kind of rummaged through these. SC. And let's take a look at what's on that side. Not much there. I think this, I can't remember exactly what SC stands for. This might be the one that Russ, my buddy, the, uh, the millennial numismatist, pointed out as the world's first fiat currency. That's number two. Number three has just a really nice strike here. Uh, take a look at that. If any of you are able to read that, by all means, please let us know in the comments. This is coin number two. And, you know, so interesting. Not You know, they were struck so crudely back those in those days, hundreds or thousands of years ago. To see one with a really nice centered strike like that is really quite cool. Here is coin number four. Take a look. Not sure who that is. Perhaps a warrior? That might be a helmet on his head. And let's see what this is. Oh, look at this. All right, you've got two figures there. Maybe three figures. Maybe it looks like an angel on the left and the right. This is coin number four. Again, those of you who are experts in the field of ancient coins, please let me know what you know about this one. Here's another one with a nice strike. What emperor was that? Uh, you know, it's just really, really intriguing. You got the emperor on one side, uh, and it appears to be a warrior on the other. Is that an axe or a spear that that warrior is holding there? Um, I don't know. I just, the more I look at these, the more I am eager to learn more. That looks like one of the Roman emperors. Again, which one? Not sure. Oh, there's another warrior. He's got his shield there in his left hand holding and uh, it appears to be a spear on the right. And that would be coin number, boy, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is number seven here. And there again, another one of the emperors. What's, what is this? Maybe some sort of coat of arms, not quite sure there. You know, I was picking these out of uh, just a massive box of coins. And, uh, you know, not with not in any way, shape or form educated about what I was choosing, only about what appealed to me uh, visually. And there is a couple figures to the left and right. Uh, maybe angels. I mean, they have looks like it's either wings on their back or perhaps even shields. Who knows? And maybe some of you guys do. This one looks so old and, you know, it just boggles the mind to kind of think how many hands held these coins and what was this coin used to purchase uh, a, a a bit of oil for cooking, a weapon, a day's wages. Uh, Lord only knows uh, what this and look at this one. This looks like copper here. And let's see what's on the other side of that one. Oh, okay. What is this? Um, uh, does the figure on the right have a sword? 
Is that a bow on his back? The, the main figure on the left there, perhaps a spear and something in his hand. I don't know, just absolutely fascinating. Thanks for spending some time with me. Uh, you got to see me hold that really expensive coin and then also at the same time show you the ancient coins that I picked up. I'll tell you what, some of these will be available at my auction on Saturday night. So if you're into ancient coins or you just like to dabble, be sure to tune in to my auction. They're a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I go to these coin shops. I buy items. I keep some. I sell others. And the cycle continues. So if you'd like to join, check out the link on your screen there to my auction Saturday night. And if you have kind of stumbled upon my channel, if you're an ancient coin collector, just know that I do spend some time at Harlan J. Burke from time to time. And uh, talk to guys who are some of the foremost experts in the world of ancient numismatics. And if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe by clicking that button right there.